Brightstorm has thousands of high-quality videos covering all major subjects. Please check out more at www.brightstorm.com. All right, so in the stoichiometry unit, you're probably going to come, come across something called limiting reactants, also known as limiting reagents. And that limits the extent of a reaction the amount of product formed. What exactly does that mean? Let's break it into something that makes more tangible sense to us. Let's say uh, you worked in a bike shop and you were ma making bicycles, and I gave you 20 wheels, 20 bicycle wheels, and 15 bicycle seats, along with the many other things that are required to make a bike. How many bikes with these um, pieces of equipment, how many bikes can you actually make? Well, we know that each bike requires two wheels, so I can make a total of 10 bikes. <clears throat> okay, um, I'm limited by the amount of wheels I have. I have an excess, or I'm left over with five bikes, so I, I'm sorry, five seats. So I'm, I, when I'm finished, I have 10 bikes and five seats left over. I have five seats in excess. This is gonna be my excess reactant. Um, I'm limited by the amount of wheels I make. My product is dependent on my limiting reactant, in this case, my wheels. So I'm gonna call this my limiting reactant. Okay, so let's actually break this down into something that's, um, that's chemistry-based. Let's say you worked um, in a plant that's making ammonia, ammonia particles. We know ammonia has a reaction of um, nitrogen, nitrogen gas plus three moles of hydrogen gas, yielding two moles of nitrogen gas, oh, sorry, ammonia gas. Okay, but let's say um, we gave you three moles of each nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas. How much ammonia can you produce? Well, I know right away, looking at my mole ratios, one to three, I'm gonna use my three moles of, mo of hydrogen molecules right away with one mole of uh, nitrogen molecules. So, I'm limited by the amount of hydrogen. So this is gonna be my limiting reactant. I'm actually gonna make two, I'm only able to make two moles of ammonia. Okay, I'm limited by my ammonia, by my hydrogen, and my excess is my nitrogen. Um, how much nitrogen do I have left over after the reaction took place? Well, I have, um, I used one when it reacted with those three, so I have two left over. I'm going to say two moles in excess left over. Let's actually do a problem that actually incorporates all these concepts. Okay. Um, solid sodium and iron three oxide is one in a series of reactions that inflates a car airbag. Um, if 100 grams of sodium and 100 grams of iron three, ox iron three oxide are used, determine A, the limiting reactant, B, the excess reactant, C, the mass of the product, and D, the mass of the excess, whatever is left over of the reactants. I've actually put this reaction on the board for us, balanced, and uh, I gave the products. I know this is a single replacement reaction, so it's easy for me to figure out. I just swapped the metals. Um, and I look at my, the information I have for my problem, and I know that I have 100 grams of sodium, so I'm going to write that down here to make it easier for me to see. And I'm also given 100 grams of iron 3 oxide. Okay. Now, right away, before even looking at the problem and what they're asking me, I know right away this is a limiting reactant problem. How do I know that? Well, I, I'm given two, um, the masses of two reactants in my uh, chemical equation. That right away is an indicator that it's a limiting reactant problem and you have to go about the procedure this way and figure out which one is a limiting reactant because sometimes the problems aren't so clear in that. So, I have to figure, the first thing we have to do is figure out which one is a limiting reactant. So, um, I'm going to figure out if I'm given 100 grams of sodium, how much um, iron 3 oxide am I going to need to react with this fully? So I'm going to start do a mass to mass problem. So I'm going to say 100 grams of sodium. And the only way to compare these is going through moles. So I'm going to say for every, um, in one mole of sodium, I know from my periodic table that it's 23 grams of sodium. I also know from my reaction, um, I require six moles of sodium to react with one mole of iron 3 oxide. Okay, so now I'm in moles of iron 3 oxide. I want to get to grams of iron 3 oxide because I want to compare the grams I get from here to this that I have in my hand or I have in my uh, possession. So for every one mole of iron 3 oxide, looking at my periodic table, it's 159, I'm pretty sure, 159.6 grams of iron 3 oxide. So doing this math, uh, 100 times 1 times 1 times 159.6, times 23, sorry, divided by 23, divided by 6, divided by 1, it's going to give me 115.7 grams of Fe2O3 required. 
required for 100 grams. Do I have 115.7 grams? No, I only have 100. So I'm actually limited, the products are limited by the amount of Fe203. I'm going to have an excess of sodium. So I'm going to say that my limiting reactant in this case is Fe203. My excess is sodium. Okay, this is my, I'm going to write that here also. Limiting reactant, excess reactant. Okay, so I did A and B. Great. Um, what's the mass of solid iron produced? Well, in order to figure out how much products are produced, I have to go by my limiting reactant. My products are limited by my limiting reactant. So I'm going to say, use this number here. I'm going to say 100 grams. And I'm going to have to do a mass to mass relationship to figure out how much um, iron I need. So 100 grams of Fe203. Um, I know the mass of Fe203, um, one mole, is looking at a periodic table is 159.6 grams. I know that, um, so I'm looking at my periodic table, I know that one mole of Fe203, um, I require two moles of iron. And looking at my periodic table, I'm looking for grams, how much I'm looking for the mass of solid iron produced. So I need to make sure that's in grams. So one mole of Fe, looking at my periodic table, is 55 0.8 grams of Fe. So doing this math, 100 times 1 times 2 times 55.8 divided by 159.6 divided by 1 divided by 1 gives me 69.9 9 grams of iron. I'm going to mark all these off. Uh, so I'm actually with 100 grams of Fe203, I'm able to produce 69.9 grams of iron. Great. Uh, lastly, I'm going to do D, um, how much of the excess reactant is left unreacted. So I know that I started out with 100 grams of um, sodium, how much actually reacted? So in order to actually get the information about everything, I have to deal with my limiting reactant. So actually, let's do the math over here. Um, I have 100 grams of iron, iron 3 oxide, Fe2O3. Um, I know my, I have to do a mass to mass uh, ratio, so I'm to make it to, to get to moles. So I'm going to have to get, um, so this is 100 grams, it is 159.6 grams. It's for every one mole of Fe203. Um, looking at my reaction, I have one mole of Fe203 for every six moles of sodium. And I want to get the mass of sodium, so I'm going to say one mole of sodium is 23. Looking at my periodic table, grams of sodium. Sorry, it's squished up. All right, so if I were to do the math of this, 100 times 1 times 6 times 23 times 159.6, I'm sorry, divided by 159.6, divided by 1, divided by 1, is actually going to give me 86.47 grams of sodium. That's how much I actually used in my reaction, I'm sorry, 86.47 grams of sodium but I gave you 100 grams of sodium. So how much was left unreacted? We're going to subtract these two, and we get 13.53 grams of sodium left over. OK. So these are all the different types of questions you're going to see when dealing with limiting reactive problems. And hopefully this helped you out. And by two. I can't do this with you two laughing back there. <laughs> so if we had, no, that's not right, three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> <laughs> that should be less than. Yeah. yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be bleh, starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, two fix. Yeah. <laughs>